if you want to convolve two unit step functions, remember that if I take a function and convolve it with a unit step function, that's like integrating the function over tau. So here, the thing that I'm particularly integrating itself is also a step function. So if I think about what that looks like, let me write it like this. Your calculus teachers probably are not used to writing something, showing you something this way. Uh, it's a function that looks like this. I'm just going to stick it right here in the integral. Look at that, me being a rebel. All right, so this is the function I'm integrating. Obviously, all the stuff down here is getting chopped off at zero. So I'll change the lower limit here to zero, and we're just integrating one from zero to tau. Now, the thing that I was a little sloppy about here, I, was, I think I was sloppy about this in one of the videos. This is really for uh, t bigger than zero, because anything below this, we haven't started it yet. So I might say something like this, just for now, for thinking about it, for t bigger equal to zero. And I'll write here zero for t less than zero. All right, so what do we have here? We're integrating a constant. So what is the result of this integration going to look like? Well, it's going to be zero up until a certain point, and then it's going to start increasing linearly because what do I get when I integrate a constant? I get a ramp here. Now, if I wanted to write this out as a formula, I could say, oh, well, this is t for t bigger than or equal to zero, and it's zero for t less than zero. And that comes from, if I do the indefinite integral here, let me do that over the side, zero t d tau. Well, what does this look like? It looks like I'm going to have a tau here, and I'm evaluating it between t equal, tau equals zero and tau equal t. So that's how I plug in the t. Then I look at this go, oh, well, there's an easier way to write this. Let me write this as t ut. So this is a, this is a ramp function. That's what I get with convolving a u with a u. All right, so then the next question that was asked is, so if that's the result, it's t ut. So the next question is, what if one of these u's is shifted? And it doesn't really matter. I could pick either one. So suppose I had u of t and I were to convolve that with u of t plus 10. So this is a u shifted to the left. You could go through all this complicated having to think about it. Or think about it like this. Well, what is u of t plus 10? Well, it's like ut convolved with delta t plus 10, because we know this corresponds with the shift. So these two things are equivalent. Well, I know from the associativity property that I can swap the order, or I can swap where I put the bracket. So I could write this like this, put the brackets over here. And now we just showed that u of t convolved with ut is the same as this guy here. So I could write this as t u t convolved with delta t plus 10. And this is then equal, what does it do? It shifts. One thing you want to be very careful with always is that when you shift, you shift everything. So you shift this guy and you shift this guy. Like all the places that t's, they need to get the shift action going on. So write this as t plus 10, u of t plus 10. And if I wanted to plot it, I have my unit step function that's been, if this is zero here, I have my unit step function that's been shifted down here to minus 10. And so it starts and goes up like that with a slope of one. Now I've written it out here in more detail than you probably actually need. Once you get some experience with this, you start going, oh, well, I've got these things. Okay, there's a shift. Well, one of the beauties of being able to rearrange LTI systems, if there's a shift going on, you can stick that shift wherever it's most convenient. So why don't I try to think about the things without the shift and then shift it later? That's perfectly fine.